Welcome back to Monroe Live. Today we're going to look at some of the styling and the interior details for the 2023 Nissan Aria. Now, in looking at this vehicle, uh, it is my personal favorite paint color, but I actually think it's the best paint color for filming. Now, here's why. If this is a white car, all white, any of the different facets or shapes in the body just kind of blend out. It also happens with a solid black car. You get a little bit more enhanced detail with black, but with this metallic blue, the areas that are in shade or in shadow start to look black and you get that blue enhanced image on whatever facet is facing you. So when we're trying to do some sort of a review on camera, looking across a vehicle body, that is my favorite color to actually show the details and differences, how the body panels move and how that shape is reflected in those facets with the color. So for me, it's my favorite color when we're doing a review. Same with a light interior. Looking at the front of this vehicle, it's very, very smooth. And it's kind of interesting. I was having a conversation yesterday with someone who their biggest complaint with electric vehicles, they hated the fact that they don't have grills. Now, no, you don't need a grill, but they personally liked the styling that is present within grills. Now, of course, that's going to hurt your fuel economy. It's going to hurt your aerodynamics. So there's still a lot of styling that is put into the facias of some vehicles to try and give some sort of a texture, some sort of a look while keeping that aerodynamics. And they have that here. Uh, there is piano black exterior, which whether you hate it or not, but it's minimized in the fact that there's not a lot of trim running down this body. We have black along the lower, going up over our wheel wells, black mirrors, but there's no long side pieces, layers of decoration. It is a little bit sleeker. I mean, the one chrome accent going across the roof. I think styling wise, it's not bad at all in my opinion. This is a Nissan. And in my time here at Monroe, we have not been able to look at very many Nissans. So I was actually excited to be able to look through and try and find out what they're doing differently. Now, again, I'm always looking at everything from a cost perspective. And in order to try and get electric vehicles into more people's garages, we need to try and get the cost down so that they're somewhat reasonable. When I was looking at this Nissan, I was hoping we were going to look at a forty dollars to $45,000 Nissan and see what they're able to do for decoration within a vehicle that price point. Unfortunately, this vehicle is $59,000. Once we're approaching $60,000, I start to get a lot more critical on what they are providing in the interior, where they have put the money. So let's look at this one. So interior for interior decoration and maybe some features and functions. Okay, there is a large screen. It's not a single screen, however, even with it off, I can see the outlines of the two independent screens that are here. Surrounding that screen, we actually have a wrapped panel. Now, it is a very sleek wrapped panel. It appears that there's only one stitch line, so we don't have functional seams, we don't have a lot of complications. They did what they could to keep the cost of this panel minimized. There is a faux wood grain. Now, the good thing about this faux wood grain is rather than just have a printed wood grain, they actually have in mold texture that makes it feel like it is an open wood grain, but it is not. So there's money spent on the screen. There's money spent on this surround. There's money spent on this faux wood grain. But the rest, this is all just injection molded plastic. I would say that that is a good minimize use of the dollars that you have to put in the interior. They're giving you some accents to give you some luxury, but they're able to keep it very inexpensive. But the problem is this isn't an inexpensive vehicle. It's $59,000. I would expect a little more for that. But again, I'm not really getting into the electronics and the functions. Now looking at that door, you'll see two areas where there are a bunch of puncture holes. The lower left corner, that is a speaker. Now that's just an in mold decorative grill. But the upper portion, you see that white, that looks like a somewhat opaque lens. So I'm assuming that those are 
lighted doors and that is just a lens for the lighting there. But unfortunately I have not been able to drive this vehicle so I will have to leave that as an, as an assumption. Now looking back at this interior, again $59,000. I've pointed out three areas where they have decided to put in money. But look at the center console. Now this is a fairly tall center console. Okay. In looking at a center console like this, I'm trying to figure out what type of features do I have. I have that faux wood grain. I have some capacitive touch switches built into the panel. Now these are my cup holders. This seems kind of funny to me. I have no real resistance here. So I'm wondering what is that actually doing when I'm putting in a cup? So it's taking up some of the space if I have a smaller cup to stop it from rattling around, but it's such light force. I don't think it's actually doing anything unless I'm misinterpreting the purpose of these panels. Now, when I look at this, I think, okay, I have a lot of storage here underneath the armrest. That's where I have the big bin. Well, there's a problem with that. There is no storage underneath this armrest. So what's going on with this center console? You'll notice that there are basically two sections of the center console. This is a powered upper panel to allow you to move it forward or back depending on your seating position. But the entire lower section is fixed. There is heat ducts that run through that section that go to the rear occupant. But this has an expensive mechanism, an expensive power mechanism, but it does not actually provide you any actual benefit. I'm not getting the storage that I would expect to get in a center console. There's a lot of parts that are being built up for this center console. So then I have another question. All right, I'm paying for a powered upper center console armrest. How much am I paying for that? Is this an option that I'm only getting with a $59,000 vehicle? Do we have a model below this that this is fixed? Or is that powered feature being cascaded across the entire platform. Now there are benefits and detractions for both. One, if there is a line item on the build sheet for this vehicle that provides you this center console, well now you're paying extra specifically for the center console. What benefit am I getting for this being power or just mechanical? Personally, I don't think that it's worth it. This is not something that I would function and move as much or enough to justify the cost. But if they have to pay for two mechanisms, pay for a mechanical mechanism and pay for a power mechanism, that's almost twice the amount of tooling. That's twice the amount of storage space. You have to have them on the line. When a certain vehicle build comes through, you have to say, okay, we're pulling from that box or this box. That is a complexity. What if they're providing this power center console to the entire program? Well, now they've increased the amount that they're purchasing. So they will have a reduction in the cost there but they can also reduce the amount of storage, inventory, complexity. I don't know if this translates across the entire vehicle program, um, but to me, the only benefit that I'm really getting, and I'm losing the benefit of having some sort of a bin that translates down, I don't see that as a worthwhile feature. These seats are synthetic materials. They're a vinyl, but it's a mix between just a vinyl and then this perforated area and this lower portion is an artificial suede. It actually feels quite nice. Um, suede, real suede, is horrible for durability, for cleanability. Artificial suede is much better. This is not going to give you the hot feel on your thigh if you're wearing shorts like the vinyl would. So there is a benefit to that material there as well. Um, but there's still a cleanability issue with that type of suede. There's a problem that all EVs have, and especially if you're trying to keep a lower profile vehicle, a sedan or a small SUV, and that is the battery. The battery has raised the level of the floor. By raising the level of the floor, it raises the height of the seating, the height of my feet in relation to the door, and then the overall proportions of the vehicle. I am sitting well above this center console. And if I'm actually sitting in this vehicle in a position that's comfortable for me to drive, my head is in the overhead. 
this headliner is a problem for me. Now, if I have to sit much farther forward, if I have an occupant in the back seat, I'm really into this headliner. Um, but this is a geometry problem. And honestly, it's a geometry problem that I have seen across vehicles. So because I'm an automotive engineer, I'm an interiors engineer, I know all of the battles that I have to fight in designing and developing all of these different features. I have to point this out. You see this circle around this button? Uh, there is some sort of a tool action that was required here. Now again, this has a film on it, but that tool action has made this pronounced line. That we would normally consider not really a defect because it's in the tool, but it's a parting line condition that would normally never be allowed on most of the vehicles that I have worked on. And again, that parting line is high visibility in a high touch area. Um, I would question that, and I know some of the customers that I've worked on, the OEMs that I've worked with would not allow that, but Nissan has let that pass. So I thought that was kind of interesting. Sitting in the back seat, as long as that seat is forward, this is fairly comfortable for me. It's not too bad. Um, I would have more of a problem in the front seat if that seat is forward. But I'm trying to look at the features that I see back here. The doors are a very similar construction to the front row. So that's kind of nice. They didn't have to reduce the trim quality of the rear seat. Looking at the seat backs, this is an all fabric seat back. We don't have hard plastic back panels. This is kind of interesting. I'm assuming that this is just a styling decision. But the styling decision with how these headrests were wrapped, that is a lot of material breakup. That is a lot of material waste. Nissan may be getting a very good price on their vinyl. I know I have worked with them in the past and they've directed me to some materials that were very inexpensive. That was almost shockingly so. Um, but this is a lot of labor to create this type of feature. If you're paying for it, and since this is $59,000, I'd say you are paying for it, you should be able to see things that are giving you the value of your money. Uh, but I have a few problems. Let's look at the stitching really close, which we haven't really done that much recently. I want you to actually see each stitch, the distance between each stitch, and the fact that the holes that these threads are going through are already pulling. You can see an oblong hole. You shouldn't really be able to see the holes that well. This is a condition that I would worry about going across this seat over time. That if this stuff heats up and shrinks, that these holes are gonna pull tighter and tighter. They may split open. Um, paying to repair a split seam. Uh, I, know, I know many people on the aftermarket think that they can just go in and have a seam closed up or restitched. It, is not anything less than a three to a five hundred dollar job to do that because you have to restitch, you have to remove the entire cover, you have to pull out all of these stitches to get to the stitch that you need. You can't just re-sew them. Um, so that's something that I would question over time. Whether the proper needle, the proper spacing, and the right material was used to develop that seam. Now looking back at our center console. Again, we know that that center console has very little depth. There's no real storage bin here. And it's because this upper portion moves, it's eliminated all lower storage. There is an air duct that moves with this. So that means that I have a duct assembly that is translating. Um, however, they had to make the transition in the lower portion from a fixed duct to a moving duct has eaten up all of that space. So I don't even have a storage cubby down here. So again, the choice for that powered center console armrest, paying for the motor, paying for the ducts that now have to go from a fixed duct to a moving duct, all of that is hidden. It's not available to the customer for any storage space. I personally don't think that's worth it. I looked at the build sheet and lighted trim for the tailgate was actually a um, separate line item over and above the normal asking price of this vehicle. So it has that type of a feature. Now I was looking at the load floor. Normally you'll have a load floor, you'll have a single handle, you'll have a hinge to another portion of the load floor. But I have two handles here. I was trying to figure out why, I'm like, okay, they are completely two separate panels. Um, in looking at two completely separate panels, I'm like, all right, what is the benefit of that? I could be using one while having one open. 
there is a benefit there. If there was something in there that I had to get to and I had luggage, I can still pull that out and get access just by shoving things back. So there is a slight benefit. I could remove just one. It is lighter dealing with one at a time, but there is a cost associated with this. One, I'm paying for two handles. All right, handles are cheap. I'm paying for the closeout. I'm paying for the panel wrapping. Now, I would normally have to pay for edge wrapping just around the outer edge of this panel, and then it would be a solid panel that would have allow for a hinge. This one, I'm paying for the edge wrapping on these two edges in addition. Having to have adhesive, well, this is probably a uh, hot melt adhesive applied to one side. Then there's a tool that allows this to come over. It heats up, allowing that hot melt to bond. Uh, trying to get good seams in the areas where that folds over. These are not sewn. That is just left the way it is. It is an increase in the amount of headache you have to deal with now doing this across two panels than just one. All in all, style-wise and material choice across this vehicle, I think that they were able to do a lot with a lower budget than what we would see in others at a $60,000 line. However, because of that, I would really expect this at forty-five. dollars Now, how much of the money it's going into the battery and technology that maybe this is more impressive than other vehicles of the same price point. I don't know. The interior panels look nice, but all the material choices together. It's a great way to save money if they could give me a less expensive vehicle. The problem is they did not give me a less expensive vehicle. But of course, it's an EV. What am I getting from an EV? I'm getting that big, beautiful frunk. And that frunk is going to make up for all that loss. It's going to be so, so impressive. So let's see what we have here. Not a front, not even a shock supported hood. I have a uh, rod. So I'm still missing a benefit at $60,000, $59,000. I think that styling wise, this vehicle has come so far. And I think that it has reduced some of the cost in the interior that would allow for a less expensive EV but it's not a less expensive EV. So I'm a little disappointed there. So again, these are just my opinions. These are the things that I look at. I spend more time on the interior because that is what I know. I can see where money has been spent. I can see where money has been saved. Does that mean savings for the customer? I would hope that it would mean savings for the customer because I wanna see more of these on the road. At $60,000, I don't see more of these on the road and having a benefit to the customer. Uh, that is my opinion, that's my viewpoint. Now there may be things in the technology, in the drivetrain that really, really make this impressive and I'll leave that for other, people's to, other people to describe. That is not my forte. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed what we have looked at and some of the little tiny fine details. If you're not subscribed, please subscribe. Look forward to future videos from Monroe Live. Thank you.